Hi everyone, welcome to this course. In this Earth Engine Python API and Google Colab course, we'll be covering a range of geospatial data analysis. We'll be using Google Earth, Google Colab, and Python. So if you're new to Google Earth Engine, Google Earth Engine is a cloud um, computing API, um, a cloud um, environment where you can access a large a volume of geospatial data and physical data and satellite data and also analyze it on the cloud uh, on Google's um, um, cloud computing environment or um, um, uh, high performance uh, computing. So uh, we'll be using the Google Earth Engine cloud computing and we'll also be using the uh, Google Collaboratory or uh, in a short form it's called Google Collab which is uh, like um, the popular Jupyter notebook um, IDE, so it's hosted on the cloud. So you, you have a Jupyter notebook. Uh, so Google Collab is, uh, if you're new, um, it's more like a Jupyter notebook on the cloud. So you don't have most of the Python package uh, or data science, um, a special data science package are already installed. So you have to just import them. So it's a pretty handy uh, platform. So we'll be using mostly, um, you know, Google Collab and Google Earth Engine. Um, and in a Python environment to do um, you know a bunch of geospatial data processing and analysis in this course and the reason we're using this collab environment is that so Google Earth Engine comes with two um, APIs the first one is the JavaScript API and the second one is the Python API so in this case although the JavaScript is a most popular and advanced um, you know uh, API code editor um, in this case, um, we'll be using, you know, the Python API for most people who want um, to do their analysis in, in a Python programming language. So this is a handy way. So we'll be using Colab and Earth Engine um, and Python. So uh, in addition, we'll be uh, covering a range of, uh, you know, remote sensing and geospatial data analysis topics. Um, some of this include uh, getting you up to uh, speed in terms of Google Collab, um, Collab and also Earth Engine if you're in case you're new to Earth Engine and you'll be setting up um, creating your Earth Engine account and we'll walk you through um, you know how to um, get started uh, write your first Python code on Earth Engine using Collab and download geospatial um, and satellite data uh, visualize uh, satellite data and doing some um, basic remote sensing analysis such as clipping, mosaicing, and you know mapping an image collection, um, and a large volume of you know satellite data handling that, um, and also we'll do some machine learning um, um, uh, algorithm. We'll do uh, unsupervised and supervised classification, um, and uh, finally we'll do a, a remote sensing application. In, in, in forest monitoring. So we'll, we'll, we'll see some example codes and analysis uh, in terms of how to monitor foresters using satellite data or remote sensing data. So now, without further ado, let's get started. Um, so in this lecture, we'll talk about um, what Google Collab is. Um, so to get started, uh, let's type in um, Collab on Google. Collab. So enter, and you can see here um, encyclopedia and also the main uh, Google Collab site. So collab.researchgoogle.com. So Collab is one of the Google uh, research product. Um, so it's more like if you know a Jupyter notebook, it's more like a cloud um, cloud based uh, uh, Jupyter. Uh, notebook dashboard so you don't have to uh, manually um, install um, you know some libraries um, on your conda environment or on a local machine it's just taken care of um, for you uh, at the you know call lab in, in the cloud so it's a cloud-based um, you know Jupyter notebook so to speak um, so and and it's free and then one of the things that you need to um, access Colab is you need a Gmail account and if you have a Gmail account you need to um, 
you know, have, um, a, you know, your Google Drive and then you can create a, a Collab notebook, something like you create a, a Jupyter notebook, okay? So what's collaboratory? So a collab, a collaboratory or collab in a short form, uh, you know, allows you to write and execute a Python in your browser and it has a zero configuration required. So if you were to do a Jupyter notebook, you need to configure some and install some package. But here you just need to, um, you know, import some package. You don't have to configure. And then you also have access to GPU and easy sharing of your, your codes. Technically, you just um, share your collab code uh, with other, you know, collaborators and, and, and it's fairly straightforward. Um, so how do you um, create a, a collab notebook? So you need to go to your, your drive, your Google Drive, and then create a new um, collabs you see google collaboratory you just create a new and then um it will give you an option to create a new notebook it's just uh, like a jupyter notebook so you can rename your um collab notebook um for example test one and dot um that's uh, a notebook um, um suffix and then you have um you know, runtime and edit and file. So you can save your file um, as a copy in your drive or in a GitHub and things like that. But basically now uh, we don't do fa fancy things here. And also you have different cells. So this is when you click this, you add um, a cell that's um, executable. So you write a code, for example, import numpy, then you can execute this code it will import this package. And also you have a text um, a text um, cell where you can, for example, let me just move this app. And then you can, for example, write um, import, um, I don't have to just comment it, package. So you can execute this, then um, it will just um, consider it as a text. It will not, um, oh, because it's import, it's considering it as, um, as um, I will, let me just make it a, a human readable a sentence so that it will consider it. Oh, did I, let me just add a, a cell which is all right so we can I can um, change the font type to bold and what have you let me just tell it actually import packages and then this is a text so, so because uh, this this cell was um, added as a a code cell, so that it's assuming it as a. You can also delete a cell, so let's delete that. So this is a text. Um, you can write anything, any text about this code, and you can also add um, a code cell. So technically, it's uh, it's more like a Jupyter notebook, uh, but a cloud um, hosted uh, environment. And the advantage is, you know, you don't have to um, run, uh, you don't have to, you know, configure some some package, and then uh, unlike a Jupyter notebook. So in this lecture, um, since in this course we're using Collab, um, Google Collab and Google Earth Engine um, uh, platform, uh, we have discussed uh, Google Collab in the previous lecture. So let's discuss about what Google Earth Engine is. So first thing first, uh, let's uh, type in Earth Engine. So Google Earth Engine. So Google Earth Engine is a, a cloud um, platform um, um, by Google, which um, is used to analyze um, and store 
a large volume of um, Earth observation data or geospatial data. And so this is the website um, um, of the Earth Engine or the Google Earth Engine um, site. And you need to have um, uh, access to this uh, account. Uh, you need to um, sign up to create an Earth Engine account, uh, mostly um, free for uh, research um, uh, and educational and nonprofit purpose. So you can request um, access for uh, for a Google Earth Engine account. Once you have access, uh, you can access um, a large uh, volume of Earth observation data in the platform. Uh, you have you know climate and weather data, um, you know temperature uh, and satellite image, including uh, Landsat, uh, Sentinel, you know MODIS and other geospatial. Uh, you know, data including crop type, land cover, and uh, nighttime light, and there's uh, more than more than uh, uh, more than that. Uh, there's a large volume of data. These are just only a sample subset of what you have on the Google Earth Engine data library. And the other thing in the Earth Engine library is um, the the platform. So there's mainly a code editor for the JavaScript. Um, uh, API. So if you click the code editor, that's what you find here. So this is a playground. Um, you can write your, your code here, mainly a JavaScript. Um, um, you can write your JavaScript here and you can execute and run. Um, and um, you can see some of the output map result here in the map canvas. The other, um, so Earth Engine has two um, APIs. The first one is the JavaScript API, which is the main platform. And the other one is the Python um, API. So the Python API is run um, using um, a Jupyter Notebook and also um, a Colab, a Google Colab, which we have discussed in the previous lecture. So by uh, running uh, a Google Colab, um, you can access the Earth Engine, um, the Earth Engine platform. So in this lecture, I'll show you how you can sign up for an Earth Engine account, okay? So let's get started. So the first thing is, um, I hope you have a Gmail account. So uh, to access Earth Engine, you need uh, a Gmail account. That's the, the one thing that you need. And the other thing is, uh, when you submit a, a sign-up application, you need to specify that you need um, the account either for educational purpose or research purpose. Uh, it's non for non-commercial. So it might take um, 24 hours to 48 hours just for you to, to be approved. And especially if you have um, an email from a university, it will, it will um, usually it, it's f pretty faster. But if you have a Gmail account, um, uh, a personal Gmail account, it might take 24 hours to 48 hours to get approved uh, to access the Earth Engine uh, cloud computing platform. Uh, but anyway, let me show you how you can uh, get started um, and have access to Earth Engine uh, for free. Uh, it's free, it's provided by Google, but for mostly um, uh, research purpose and nonprofit and uh, you know educational purpose, okay? So let's get started. Uh, Google Earth Engine, you type in Google Earth Engine, and then this is the main website. So you go to the Google Earth Engine main website. So you have, um, you know, some description, um, you know, about Google Earth Engine, and uh, you can you can explore some, some of the things here. But the main thing is uh, you have you have data sets if you're interested on data sets you know time lapse case study you know different platforms and blog but most importantly for the Earth Engine, the Earth Engine account sign up this is where you go to the Earth Engine sign up so you you, you click here sign up and then it will just give you a form uh, and then um, it will just um, you sign up your your form okay and then once you sign up uh, you know you uh, you would um, so you would uh, enter your email address full name affiliation where your country is and what you would like to accomplish with Earth Engine mostly for you know research or uh, you know educational purpose and you agree with the terms and then submit that's simply it 
and then once you submit your sign up um, you know mostly it's it's about um, you know 24 hours uh, to 48 hours and they'll get back to you and most likely um, most of most likely they'll approve you um, and then once you have access to their engine account then you can access um, all the analytic platform um, the <clears throat> cloud computing platform and also you can access all of this you know big data big geospatial you know earth science data um, you know various satellite data and also some um, geospatial uh, geophysical data like the terrain and also some other land cover night timeline and cropland and then some also socioeconomic data there's a whole lot of data in the earth engine data archive and the other thing is you you'll have access to the the um, analytic platform the cloud computing platform and then you can run your analysis um, on the cloud on the google cloud So in this lecture, uh, we'll be uh, importing a, a Landsat image and um, exporting it to our Google Drive. That's the you know exercise that we're doing in this um, in this case. So let's load uh, our Landsat image as always. So let's load Landsat data. We'll create a variable um, Landsat eight and. Um, I'll use Earth Engine image and then provide the image ID. I already know that. And then let's select uh, the bands that I'll be using. I'll choose band um, 4, 3, and 2. Okay, um, that will be it. And um, let's create a visualization bar. Actually, we don't need a visualization parameter. And then let's um, let's create a, a region because this is large data. So mind you, when you export a large data, you're just consuming a lot of processing. So I usually want to export uh, on a smaller subset area. So let's create a, a region and so our region here is, don't worry about it, this is just, um, I already have created this um, location or this rectangle, so you don't have to memorize or worry about it. And if you want a different location, you can just uh, provide um, um, a different location, but then the Landsat data has to match that location. That's just the main thing that you need to do. So I'll uh, create a variable region and EE geometry. Um, Earth engine and then rectangle. That's a built-in Earth engine function. Once you provide coordinates, you will create a rectangle. So I'm providing um, this. Um, um, sorry, that's a number. I don't need a quotation. Uh, provide this lot long coordinate information for this, um, you know, rectangle, and then it automatically uh, would create um, um, uh, the rectangle on using this um, Earth engine built-in function. Okay, so this is my uh, coordinate. So that's my region, I'll execute that. Awesome. And the next step is actually to write the export function. Okay, just um, exporting to Google Drive. So let's um, create another cell here. And um, let's write export to drive, okay. Okay, so let's create a function called task. Okay, ee batch, that's an Earth Engine built in function. Export um, image and then to drive. Okay, so that's an Earth Engine built in function. And then we'll open a curly bracket to enter our parameter here. Okay. So the first parameter in the export is uh, defining image. So this will ask you what's the image that you're interested. So this is our image, Landsat 8. That's what I want to export, okay? And then comma, the other one is description. So the description is more like to for you 
to remember like what the data is. So we can say image to drive example. That way you can remember what the data is. And the other one is just a folder. It will act, um, so you have to define an existing folder or you can create. So if you provide a name that's not existing, you'll automatically create it. So example folder, okay. That's the under quotation actually. And the next thing is um, to define um, scale. Scale is technically the spatial resolution of the data. In this case, it's a 30 meter since it's a Lanza data. And the last thing um, in this parameter, export parameter is a region. So we have created a rectangle here, right? So we'll just call that. We'll use this rectangle to export. That means the size of the image that we want to export is this one, but it doesn't understand the uh, coordinate information. So if you use the raw data, so instead what we use is region get info and that way, um, and then we can extract the coordinates by writing coordinates. This will extract the coordinates automatically and that way um, it will uh, it will create the the export before we uh, execute the export we just need to start the export so this is our task so we have to say task start that will actually initiate the export first let's execute the the importing the landsat data and then export okay if you see the folder here, it's empty. So we'll refresh to make sure that it's uh, exporting. So it uh, should be processing and uh, should, we should be able to see in a, in a few seconds here, the data. And mind you, the name that we have given the, the description, the, the name is the image to drive example. So in this folder, we'll see the, the image, hopefully fairly soon. Just refreshing if the export is processed already. Might take a little, a uh, few seconds now. Excellent. So now we have image drive example T file here. That's our Landsat image and it's a 15 megabyte size. So that's uh, how you would export um, uh, to your Google Drive um, in the Earth Engine Python API and Collab. Uh, so we'll be using uh, the Earth Engine uh, uh, API cloud environment uh, to download image collections. So if you don't have Earth Engine, um, you can go to earthengine.google.com and sign up for an account. Uh, once you have that, um, you can go to the data catalog and um, search for Sentinel data here. Uh, so Sentinel is a satellite sensor by the European Satellite Agency, ASA, um, for uh, Earth observation monitoring. So uh, if, um, for example, if you want to download not a single image, but uh, multiple images, um, for example, here you have Sentinel image uh, collection or data time series um, data starting from 2015 June until the current date, which is 2020 to uh, December. So you can download all of this image uh, or, um, you know, some part of the image, or for example, you can choose um, a temporal filter, six months, one year or two year. Uh, it's really up to you. And Using the code uh, that I'll be showing you in this tutorial, you can download any um, um, any any uh, you know part of this image uh, collection. So uh, and so let's go to the code. So we'll be using um, Collab and um, and the Python API of the Earth Engine um, uh, platform. So Earth Engine has a JavaScript API and then a Python API. So in this case, we'll be using a Python API uh, using Google Collab. So Google Collab is um, more like a Jupyter notebook uh, um, 
uh, hosted on the cloud. You don't have to install uh, all of these packages, uh, rather import them. So once you have your Erzingen account, uh, excuse me, um, you can import uh, EE, import Erzingen and authenticate and initialize. Um, since I've already done um, that, I'll just simply import and initialize Erzingen. But in your case, you need to uh, authenticate that. Um, and after you have authenticated, you can choose any location. Uh, for example, here, um, you can choose, uh, you know, this um, uh, location. You can provide a lot long information. Um, and you can use this or you can uh, provide a different location if you want to download data for a different location. And we can also um, invert um, we can also invert this coordinate information so that uh, we'll be using it uh, to map um, on a folia uh, a package later. Uh, I'll be showing you that. And so we have to um, find the image collection ID. Uh, if you go to the, the image collection in our engine, you can find the image collection ID here. You just simply copy and paste that here. Okay. So you don't have to memorize that image collection ID. So every image collection on our engine has a unique ID. So that's how you find the ID. And here um, we will be creating a visualization parameter, a minimum, maximum, and the different bands to generate a true color composite um, to um, visualize the satellite um, um, bands the multispectral bands of the Sentinel uh, data. And because there's cloud contamination in the image, we'll apply, uh, we'll write this function called mask to clouds to mask um, cloud contaminated pixels. All right. And the next chunk of the, the script is actually to filter, um, you know, the timestamp. You can choose uh, one year, two year, or six months. So in this case, will be filtering or downloading only um, data from January to June, uh, May of uh, 2020. And we also uh, be uh, filtering cloud contamination um, less than 30%. And another filter is geometry, like the location, um, a, point, a point location where we want uh, the image um, uh, to be downloaded right and the last thing in this function is we are applying we we're passing this um, function here and mapping mapping it over the image collection that means for every image we'll apply this cloud masking uh, function that way the result will be a cloud free or a cloud masked image and the next thing is to actually calculate ndvi so we're downloading NDVI image collection, right? So um, we write a function, this add NDVI, you pass an image and then um, select band five and four, which is the uh, near infrared and red band. And based on a normalized difference, Erzingen built-in function, we can calculate uh, NDVI and then um, return it or just add it into our image collection, okay? So this is the function, and then we uh, pass our filtered image or image collection here to this NDVI function. In effect, um, NDVI image will be added to the image collection. For every image, we'll have an NDVI, okay? So the next thing is a Folium package. So we'll import Folium to do some visualization here and we'll create a map function based on the folium uh, library. And then using map add layer, we'll just visualize uh, the median uh, image we have created here. Where is that? Over here, okay? So we've calculated the median image over that five months period, right? Uh, you know, for each pixel within the image collection, calculate the median value and then we can visualize that um, satellite data just for, um, you know, for um, 
just a cute, a cute, a, a cute um, you know, visualization uh, of how the data looks like and, you know, the impact of cloud and, and whatnot. So there you go. So this is um, the based on the location that we have chosen. Um, that's the image, uh, the Sentinel image. Um, a band combination uh, visualizations that we have created earlier, right? Um, so, and where is that? Oh, we have created a visualization here, right? So that's what what it is. So we're mapping band four, uh, three, and two. So this is just a true color composite of the satellite image. Okay, the last important part is actually to download all of the image in the image collection, in the in the filtered image collection, right? So we convert the image collection to aggregate array and based on the index, a system index, which is the ID for each image, ha each image has a unique ID. So we'll pull that and actually we'll execute that. And we have about 11 images in that image collection. So our plan is to download all of this image um, um, by automating uh, or just using this Earth Engine batch export function here. So this function will loop into um, through each image and grab the image ID here. And um, we'll grab the image ID and then export them. So export them uh, to a folder uh, here, example folder, okay? And to um, to to name the the image that's gonna be downloaded, it will uh, it will um, append the image ID um, and also um, it will pull the coordinate information from the image itself. And then if we execute this, it will start. Uh, first, let's just look at that folder here, example folder, which is empty, right? So when we execute this, it will start downloading. And the good thing is that we can also print each task or each image as it's downloading, right? So we can monitor that. It's pretty handy. And we don't have image yet, but hopefully it will start soon. We can refresh that to make sure that it's starting. There's a little bit of a delay, so you have to wait uh, just a few, um, about like 30 seconds or half a minute uh, for all these two things. So it's it's processed and let's um, check refresh again. Um, all right, just a few seconds more. And so by now uh, we have already downloaded um, five months worth of data Sentinel image or image collection in uh, Earth Engine Terminal, which right. And hopefully we have something excellent here. So we have the first image here. Uh, so all the 11 images or the, or the entire image collection based on our temporal filter, which is January 2020 to May 2020, right? About 11 Sentinel images. Uh, so since we have already, um, you know, at least the first image, uh, the others are coming here, we can download this and visualize it in QGIS, whether we have um, QGIS. Let's open a QGIS desktop environment here. There is the second um, image. So um, there is a slight delay, but oh, excellent here. One, two, three, four, five. We have about um, uh, six image image to be downloaded yet, but so we have downloaded uh, you know the image and let's open a QGIS and um, try to visualize um, you know the NDVI uh, raw image from Sentinel satellite. And so that's how you. Um, um, run a batch export or a batch import or you can say download um, um, image collection in this case a sentinel data um, 
using uh, Python API and uh, Colab. Uh, let's just see if QGIS is already loading to visualize um, this NDVI image here. While QGIS is loading, so uh, I'll leave a copy of the 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 script here. Uh, uh, you know, down below here, and you can access uh, the script and uh, run it for any any place that you're interested to download or batch export um, image collection, or in this case. Uh, uh, Sentinel based um, NDVI. Okay, so let's uh, import, uh, let's grab the uh, downloaded data here. So we can say just grab it into QGIS. That's pretty cool. So we already have um, the NDVI uh, data here. And I'll change the visualization here to pseudo and I'll click OK here. So we have NDVI um, data uh, downloaded. Uh, we actually can, you know, load all of those, um, you know, data sets. But uh, this is just uh, to show you how you can do a batch um, download or uh, export um, of an image collection, in this case, uh, Sentinel. Satellite data uh, in DVI. So in this lecture, um, I'll show you how you can um, visualize uh, NLCD um, land cover uh, data uh, from the USGS using uh, a Python API, uh, the Earth Engine Python API, and uh, Colab. Um, I hope you've already authenticated Earth Engine. If not, um, use uh, this bit of code to do that. Um, okay, let's get started. So the first thing is I'll just uh, import my NLCD data. Um, you can get um, the uh, image ID for NLCD from the Earth Engine data archive. Um, so let's get started uh, by declaring a variable data set. Okay. And because I'm importing an Earth Engine image, I'll uh, use ee.image and I'll um, provide that ID, um, image ID, which I got it from the Earth Engine library. You can go ahead and check it in the Earth Engine library if you want to. And so NLCD has different years, so to um, identify the year that I'm interested, all right, 2016, this will automatically. Um, bring me NLCD 2016, okay? And that's my data set. And in the NLCD data, there are different uh, data sets, including impervious surface and other you know, um, layers. So I would just have to select a specific layer. So I'll uh, declare another variable, land cover. And in this case, I'll um, uh, again, cast image because I'm dealing with an image data and also uh, bring this um, image which I already um, imported. Now what I'm doing is select uh, the specific layer from the NLCD uh, data. So um, I'll write select and provide the specific layer name in this case land cover. And after that, that will be it. And the next thing is to create some sort of visualization parameter and provide different color palettes. And I'll actually apply the NLCD, um, you know, color palette, which is already existing. So um, let's create our, our um, color palette here, land cover. These, that's our visualization parameter. You can change the name if you want to. It's not a requirement here. So the minimum value, I'll set that zero. And then the max value in that land cover data, 
Yes. 95. That's uh, from the NLCD data, metadata. You can get it from the metadata. And the next thing is to um, provide the color parts, the different colors. I've saved it here, so I'll just um, copy paste that here. And so this colors you can get it from you know the NLCD um, uh, you know color legend on the I think the JavaScript API part. And so this will uh, provide me the, the the different colors for uh, the different land cover classes according to the the NLCD data and so the next thing is to uh, you know we have imported our um, we've imported our NLCD data we have selected which layer we're using and then we also created a visualization parameter and minimum maximum and also different color codes now the last step is to actually visualize that data here um, as always I would just um, use an already existing um, you know function that I, I, I use um, the folium um, package and also a function that will display a map so before we do that let's execute this previous code so that um, you know it will not have issue when we finally visualize the data here I think let's execute that okay seems to be doing oh we have some error what okay so oh we have some typo here like image okay when we write image we have to write it um, correctly so I'll save this code and then execute that cell it looks good we've successfully executed that and uh, as I mentioned, the next part is importing a folium package, which helps us to visualize our map result uh, on the Python API, um, and also a function that helps us to map, which I already um, have provided. So in this case, what's important here is this line, so which needs the uh, NLCD data we have to provide it here land cover let's make sure that it's exactly matching our um, name variable here so land cover so we're technically mapping that data we already provided a visualization parameter we will also update that land cover vis and we can provide it you know land cover or you know NLCD land cover something like that you can change this part if you want to but so finally let's execute this and then we'll have um, our NLCD data which is for CONUS the United States land cover data um, let's let's see that let's execute this code and it has successfully executed fantastic so this is our NLCD data for 2016 and we can um, check and uncheck it here and so we have provided the different colors so the colors are exactly matching as the original NLCD data you can see you know more developed area red um, reddish um, color in in most of the major east um, east um, you know uh, urbanized areas like you know Newark DC Chicago and what have you in Atlanta and also some in the you know west coast in California area here uh, in Oregon and Seattle things like that so and the Midwest here um, so fantastic so that's how you can uh, visualize uh, uh, you know NLCD data using um, uh, Python Earth Engine API and uh, Google Colab so in this lecture I'll teach you how you can do some band mats mats or band combination of um, an image, uh, uh, in this case, uh, a, a Landsat image, and using the Earth Engine um, Python API and uh, Google Colab environment. Um, so if you have not um, authenticated uh, and initialized Earth Engine, use this part of the, the script to, to do that. Uh, since I already uh, have done that, I'll just go ahead and start the, to the main part of the script. So I'll load a Landsat image. Uh, in this case, I'll have to write 
the what I'm doing. So this is not part of the code, it's just commented, so it's uh, Python is not reading that. Uh, so that I remember, I'll write the title of my script. Uh, load two, five here. Landsat seven, composite. So I'll name um, a variable called Landsat. And the first year is 99. So I'll use 1999. So this is a variable name. You can change it if you want to. And then I'll cast EE image since I'm importing an image from the Earth Engine library. So I'll, I'll, I'll write the image ID that I'll be using. I'm using Landsat 7. So I'll write Landsat E7. And it's a TOA, that means top of atmospheric reflectance. It's a five year composite. And the year is 1999 to 2003. So that's my first data. And the other one is I'll actually copy this since I'm slightly changing the year to save time. So my second variable is Landsat 2008. And the only thing I change here is the year range. Okay, 2008 to 2012. So I'm importing two images from Earth Engine. The first one is a five-year composite, uh, which I'll name 1999. And the other image is Landsat 7 five-year composite. Uh, which I'll be naming as Landsat 2008, okay? And the next thing is, I'll actually need to add more cells so that I run my script. Okay, so the next part of the script is, I'll try um, <clears throat> a function that calculates um, NDVI, okay? So, and I'll just use there are two ways you can calculate NDVI. The Earth Engine built-in normalized difference um, function, <clears throat> and also I can use some band math, okay? So let me use the first approach here. Compute NDVI the hard way. So this is the difficult way, all right? So the first thing is to start my function, I'll name it uh, for example, I'll use the, the Landsat 99 image using this approach, okay? So I'll import that Landsat 1999 here, and I'll use that, and then select the different bands, okay, for my calculation. I'm calculating your NDVI, Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. And I'll select the, the bands, band four in this case, and then I'll subtract again Landsat's 1999, and then I'll select the band, in this case, band three. And divide. That's a denominator. And then Landsat 99 again. And then select a bond. A bond. Again, band four. And I'll instead of subtracting, I'll add. And then open a bracket and now Landsat again. I'll select a, a specific band here, in this case, band three, Landsat 1999, and select a band, in this case, band three. Now, this is my function that calculates NDVI for the 99 data. So the second approach is using the Earth Engine built-in um, <clears throat> NDVI function, okay? So I'll compute 
I'll um, write the title of my function compute NDVI. It's an easy way. So we're gonna do the easy way of calculating NDVI. Okay. Now instead of the 99, I'll use this the 2008 Landsat data for this calculation. Okay. So I'll name it NDVI 2008. That's my variable. And I'll import this image, the 2008 image here, and I'll paste it here. And then instead of you know selecting the different bands in this case, I'll uh, import the normalized difference Erzingen built-in function, okay? Normalize difference. So this will count this this will just um, simply you input the, the two bands that you're using for this calculation and then it will automatically calculate NDVI. So it's an, a built-in Erzingen function. And the second band is band three. That's it. That's simply it. You need to, since it's a list, you need to have a bracket here. So you can see that the, the first way we did, um, <clears throat> we just simply used, <clears throat> we simply used, um, so in the first example, we used um, band uh, mat band by subtracting and adding the different bands, which is the, the easiest way, uh, sorry, the difficult way, the long way of doing that. The other way is using simply the Erzingen built-in function, which can calculate NDVI if you provided the, the two bands that you're interested in, in this case, band four and band three of Landsat seven image, okay? So now next, let's um, create our visualization parameter here. <clears throat> so this is the visualization parameter here and I'll name it NDVI parameters. Okay, so I remember what, what it is. And then as always, I'll open a curly bracket and then name palette this way. And then just list the, the different colors that I want uh, to be used in this um, in this um, in this mapping, um, you know, don't worry about you know the color course that I'm writing. And if you want, you can go to Color Brewers, uh, Color Brewer as always, and just check the the different color codes. You know, if you want green, for example, here you can ch you know change it to uh, seven or eight, and you can simply pick you know copy the color code here and then paste it on, on your Erzingen color part. So you don't have to worry about, you know, the color codes and you don't have to memorize them. You can always grab them from the color brewer, okay? So don't worry about them if I input them. So I already uh, created them beforehand. So my first co color code is um, D73027. Um, and then I'll add a second one. And the second um, color code is um, uh, ampersand or hashtag FDAE. Sorry, this is not the right one. So F46D43. And let me create the next one. The next color code is FD AE61. The next color code is FEE08. Let me do the next one again. T9 EF. 8B. Next one is A6 D9 6A. I forgot to include the the quotation. You can use a single quotation or you can use double quotation. It really doesn't matter. And the next one is 66. 
uh, b d6 3. The last color code that I'll be using is 1a 985 and 0. I need a quotation. In this case, I'll be using single quotation. Okay. Now, let me execute the first part of the code. Okay, fantastic. So now to save time, let's um, import the map canvas script, which are already written to save time. So in this script, mind you, we're gonna, um, these are the most important parts of the, the function. So the first one is we're gonna display the NDVI, the 99 one. And the second one is <clears throat> we'll display the 2008 NDVI, which we used different approaches. The first one we used, you know, the hard way of calculating NDVI. And the second one, we used the Earth Engine built-in NDVI calculation. We just um, casted normalized difference, Earth Engine built-in function. So let's see if there are any major differences, you know, by using this the simpler way and the hard way um, of calculating NDVI. And then I'll name them NDVI 99 and 2008. And let's execute this part of the code. There's some error here. Landsat 2003 is not found. Some error here. Oh, it's because of the TOA. Okay, fantastic. Okay, great. So we're using the global, you know, Landsat data for the entire planet, you see. So we have used um, the image, um, um, the, the image for um, the 2009, um, five year Landsat 7 TOA composite for uh, the year 1999 and 2003. The second one is a five year Landsat TOA, Top of Atmospheric Reflectance Composite. Um, for the 2008 and 12 period. And then we have used two different NDVI calculation approach. And mind you, this is a global data. It's for the entire planet. So let's just um, check each of them one by one. So the first one is the NDVI 1999, okay? And the other one is the 2018. So this is a five-year composite starting from 2000. Um, sorry, 1999 to 2003. So it's a five year, you know, composite. And so it sounds like during this period, there's some sort of um, um, dry um, drought and mostly, you know, lower NDVI, uh, which indicates lower vegetation over overall in that in that period. And then if you look at this five year period, you know, relatively, it, it's, um, it, it's just wet. So if you want or interested to um, do it for specific, this is a global, um, you know, data. Um, and that's the, the power of, you know, Google Earth Engine. Um, you know, if, if, if you were using your local machine or something like that to calculate this, this large volume of data, it might take you days or weeks. But with the power of Google Earth Engine at cloud computing, you can analyze and just run um, you know, calculating big planetary geospatial data in a fraction of a second. That, that's amazing. So, um, and if you're interested to calculate this for a single country or specific study area, you can use, you know, the clipping function and other, other uh, you know, uh, special analysis, you know, tools to zoom into your study area, okay? So in this lecture, I'll teach you how you can do uh, clipping uh, a Landsat data using uh, region of interest ROI on the Earth Engine Python API and Google Colab. Let's get started. 
So first thing you need to import uh, and initialize Earth Engine. If you have not done so, please uh, go ahead and do that using this part of the script. And um, I'll just directly go to importing a Landsat image and I'll create a variable called image. And <clears throat> um, I'll cast image. That's an Earth Engine built-in way of um, importing an image. And then I'll provide the image ID for that Landsat data. And I'll be using Landsat 8. So I'll be writing LC8. And L1T, that's a level one and top of atmospheric reflectance, TOA, and um, the image ID. I'll just, uh, I got this from the Earth Engine data library. You can directly copy paste that from the Earth Engine dot library. And for 201, four zero seven seven. LG and all. Okay, perfect. So now this is my uh, Landsat image. I'm just inputting the um, image ID from uh, the Earth Engine library. And the next thing is, um, mind you, I'm trying to clip this Landsat image, okay? I first need to import it and then I need to clip it using a region of interest or shape file. So let me create a geometry um, or a point data and just create a buffer so that I can use that buffer to clip my Landsat image. So let's create a variable called ROI. And then this variable, I'll generate a geometry using the Earth Engine EE geometry dot point and a dot point so I'm creating a point and I'll provide the lot long information for my point of interest this is my um, lot long information and let me do the latitude information here okay then now this is my point data and I'll also because the point data is not used to clip because it's just a tiny area I'll generate a buffer using this data point okay so that I will have a, a more larger area or just a larger polygon instead of a point so that I can use that to uh, clip my Landsat image okay so I'll use a buffer of say 20,000 units okay from this data point and the next thing is to actually apply the clip feature so let me um, uh, create a variable called clipped so this variable will use the image which we already imported from the earth engine um, data library so image dot clip so the clip feature will clip an image using a region of interest in this case my region of interest is the ROI or the buffer <clears throat> that I've already created okay so I'll input that ROI and then close the bracket so the next thing is to create um, a parameter um, actually before that let's um, let's let's print the the Landsat image and see what what is um, the metadata for that image okay get info will help me do that okay so let's create the visualization parameter I'll create a, a variable called this and then I'll open a curly bracket and then define the bands, the Landsat bands that I'm using. 
in this case I'll create a list okay and band 5 of the Landsat image it's actually caps and band for my color composites so band um, sorry band 4 and band 3 and I'll close the single quotation and I'll close my list of bands and then I'll also provide the minimum and maximum value for this visualization and max is 0 0.5 and then I'll provide gamma for this visualization gamma values 0 0.95 1 1.1 1 .1, and 1 okay so I'll just execute this all right so the next step is to actually visualize so what we've done is import a Landsat image create a, uh, a shape file or <clears throat> a point and created a buffer around that and then clip that image using the um, the region of interest and then created a, a visualization parameter next thing is to actually visualize the data and let's go ahead and um, copy this um, script which I have already done to save time which is a visualization I usually um, use this function to create a map so it imports a folium package and so we have image here the not clipped image the original image and also here the clipped image will both visualize those two images to make sure that you know we have correctly clipped our image okay so what's going on here there's some error here image landsat asset is not found okay we might have entered some error in the landsat image um, id so let's check that actually this should be capital okay and let's just let's make sure that that's the id the image id number is correct lc08044 Zero three four two one four zero seven seven LGN zero zero that should be working fine. Let's save this and let's execute again. Hopefully it works. Hopefully. Fantastic. So it's working. So we had a typo there. So this is our original image, Landsat image. And the reason it's red is we're using false color composite, okay? So we're using Landsat 8, Band 5, Band 4, and Band 3. So we're using the, the near-infrared, um, the uh, red, and the green, okay? So we are using a false color composite. That's why... Uh, mostly green vegetated area is showing red when you have a false color composite that's what you have why is it not showing the let's see the the list here like the list of layers let's check something else here um false true it should show that to, 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 to clip visualization full image it should show our list here okay it's showing here okay all right got it so let's do it a little bit so we have two images here the first one is the full landsat image okay so which is not clipped right and it's a false color composite you can see most of the green the green areas are you know as red um, because of the vegetation cover and the other image is the clipped image you see so we used a clip um, a point and generated uh, a buffer um, 
uh, using that that point data and that's what we're just you know getting so we we're clipping this uh, raster data or Landsat data using that clip on uh, that buffer and then just here's the clipped version of our image so we properly clip the Landsat image using a shape file uh, using the earth engine python api and google collab so in this lecture we'll talk about how you can uh, use a landsat simple composite algorithm that's an earth engine built-in algorithm uh, i'll show you how you can import and uh, you know apply that um, cloud uh, removing or compositing algorithm and uh, visualize the result uh, important initialize earth engine if you have not done so so let's get started. First thing is um, I'll create a variable L8 and which is um, a Landsat 8 uh, data. So I'll be um, importing um, the Landsat 8 image collection using ee.imageCollection. That's a built-in Earth Engine function that helps you to import uh, an image collection. So I'll provide the uh, Landsat collection ID. Uh, which is a Landsat 8 in this case. So Landsat slash LC08, um, that means Landsat 8. That's a sensor, collection 1, and tier 1. So that's my uh, Landsat image collection. And I'll actually need to write uh, some um, information about um, my Landsat collection image, some text so that I can remember what, what's going on here. So composite six months of Landsat. So that's what I'm doing here. And the next step, let me execute this actually. Excellent. So in the next cell, what I'll be doing is um, so apply the simple composite algorithm. So let me just write a title, apply simple composite. I have to make this cap. Composite algorithm. Okay, so um, I'll create a variable composite, okay? And I'll call algorithms. That's how I will import Earth Engine algorithms. And the specific algorithm is Landsat. Landsat simple composite. And I'll just generate a curly bracket and then in my curly bracket here I'll just define the collection what kind of collection what's the collection that I'm using so I'm using um, the collection that I've already imported here L8 right so I'll write L8 that's my collection that will be used for this um, uh, simple composite algorithm and since it is um, a, a lot of time series data I'll specify my you know the time span or that means I'll use um, a date filter okay so I'll filter date and I'll specify the year that means the start year date and months so 2020 one one okay that's the start date and I'll also need to provide the end date, okay? I'll just um, use January to June. And that's my other parameter is, I need uh, to define as float. So that it will just, um... okay. So this is my, uh, so I imported, I imported the simple composite algorithm and I provided the collection ID and filter it by date. And I'll execute this. And the next thing is to visualize my data. Um, um, this is a single, a single map. 
So usually to save time, I just um, would like to get this um, function, which I've already written uh, using a Folium package, which will help us display that this composite. Okay, so this is the you know the composited image um, after we applied the Landsat simple composite algorithm. That's an Erzing gene built algorithm. And then here's our composite here. We input that and we'll specify the different bands that we need to you know, map. And also we can provide a name, Landsat six months uh, composite. You can change this if you want to, doesn't matter. Um, and I'll execute that. Excellent. So this is a six months, um, this is um, a false color composite, obviously. And this is a six months um, composite um, created by using the simple Landsat composite algorithm, which is an Erzingian built-in function and which does, um, you know, get um, cloud-free, you know, data and just create a composite and which looks uh, pretty interesting here. If you look at the data zoom in, uh, this is um, a false color composite, but um, you know, vi interesting visual display. You can see the water, but it's more the vegetation and the, the dry areas here. And here's the, the ocean, the Indian Ocean. So this is a global data. And if you're interested, you can, you know, you can apply some masking and, um, you know, you can just, um, you know, map it for your, your study region. But this is uh, this covers the entire planet, and that, that's the power of you know Erzingen. You know Erzingen is a, a cloud computing uh, platform, um, you know provided by Google in kind for um, educational and you know research um, and nonprofit purpose, and will will you know will provide um, you know researchers and educators access to. Uh, analyze and use the computing power to make a large volume of data such as this one in 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 in, um, in a speedy manner uh, very very fast um, in, a, in a, uh, a fraction of uh, a minute you can you can literally analyze um, big you know planetary scale data and um, you know visualize your results in, 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 in a faster manner so this is so powerful and that's just um, one example of showing you how you can access um, you know Landsat data and create um, um, composite using some built-in um, um, Erzingen algorithm and visualize your data uh, using a Python API and a Google Colab environment. So in this lecture I uh, will be um, looking at how you can filter by calendar day of year. For example, if you're interested to filter like, um, you know, January and February, you know, months uh, from a Landsat data or, you know, time series data, uh, you know, if you want to select like a couple of months or, you know, two or three months specifically, then that's what you're, um, you're going to do. Uh, doing like filtering by calendar day of year programmatically using a Python um, API in, in a collab environment. So let's get started. So the first thing is, as always, you need to import um, in the Erzingen uh, library and authenticate it. I've already done so. So go ahead and do that if you have not done. So first thing is I'll just create a, a region of interest. I'll name it ROI and create some sort of um, you know, geometry or point that so that I can use it to... Uh, you know, mask um, my my Landsat data. In this case, uh, I'll be using a Landsat 8 data, okay? So I'll, create, I'll use um, Erzingen geometry uh, to create a point data. So, and then I'll have to provide the lat long information for that data point. Um, so I already know that, that location and um, La longitude and then I also need a latitude for that um, uh, location that I want to create a point point data okay and I'll be using this point data to um, <clears throat> um, filter my my imagery okay so the next thing is actually let me write um, some indicator uh, create ROI using e -E geometry 
perfect. So the next step is to actually create, uh, I'll execute this. And the next thing is to actually create, um, um, import the image collection, which I'll be using a Landsat image collection and filter it by, you know, the ROI, region of interest that we have. Um, and also filter it by day of, you know, calendar day of year. So I'll show you how you can filter a, an image collection by using a calendar day of year or just a month technically. A range of, you know, months, months um, for example, you may select uh, anything from April to July or something like that. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing is I'll have to write some notes so that I understand what's going on. So find, that's what I'm doing now. So I'll find image within an image collection, within an image collection, um, acquired during June. So I'll be using a June, July period to filter this image. So, okay. So I'll provide, a, I'll create a, a, a variable called collection and then I'll cast um, image collection. So, and I'll provide the image collection ID. Okay. So Landsat. Landsat, that's a Landsat 8, LC08. And I'll provide also the collection 01. And also tier 1. What kind of, uh, is it a surface reflectance or top of atmospheric reflectance? So I'll provide that information as a TOA, top of atmospheric reflectance. And the next thing is to filter bounds. So um, this is a global data. So I'll be using, sorry, I have to just uh, change this into um, smaller letter filter bounds. Okay, perfect. And then I'll provide this point data, which I've already created to mask um, you know, to mask the, the Landsat data partially. Okay. So I'll provide my ROI and I'll actually, I can use this, uh, backwards you know, the slash to, um, change my line, uh, in a Python environment, you can do that. So the next thing is that's the main important thing that we're doing is just we're filtering by calendar date. How we do that? Let's see. Filter bracket ee filter instead of uh, providing a date now we say calendar range okay calendar range and then i'll provide the starting and ending months okay so because i said june i'll provide six and then the starting uh, is june and the ending is july so it's um seven and then I'll provide also the name, uh, the, the, the filter type that I'm using. In this case, I'll use months. And that's, that will be it. And the last thing that I'll do is doing um, um, sort. So this will, um, you know, this will sort the data um, by, um, you know, ascending order so I'll provide date I'll just change this into a cap acquired okay and then let's execute that we don't see any errors so this is working um, and we can also just uh, do some printing to see what's going on with this image collection right just to make sure that you know, if this is really uh, filtering June and July data, let's see, the, let's see what's going on here. So print, um, also this should be small and then print, I'll just um, print that image collection. So that's a collection we filtered. And also I will do get uh, info and that should be it. And also I think 
um, size. I need to do some size just to make sure that what we have here. All right, let's get it. Okay, so we can print uh, this to make sure that we have, so we have 79 uh, image within this uh, image collection. So, and the next thing is, let's see um, what the other properties, for example, you know, this is, there are 79 image. So let's just feel like pick one, the first image technically within this image collection. To do that, I'll just create um, a variable called first. And then I'll use the image collection I've already created and use first to give me um, the first image in that image collection and also property names. So property names, it will give me the name of that image, the first image and property property names and then I'll print the property names print property names and then get info perfect let's execute this all right so this is giving us the first image and the um, information or the metadata information for the first image. Let's see. So the next step will uh, figure out, you know, the start date for, for that image. So let's do time start. And this is a variable. So um, I'll um, get EE date so that it will change it into a calendar date so that we can understand. So the first image, that's the image I have already created, right? So uh, mind you, oh sorry. So mind you, so this is the image. That's the first image in the image collection that I'm using here, okay? So, um, and I'll do get um, system start. System time start. And I will just uh, close the bracket and i'll just tell it um, the format so the format that i need the date is i need year and then months i have to change this to capital actually and date so it will give me that okay so i'll finally i'll print this time star like this variable which would give me the time it will convert it to into a calendar date that now we know that um, if our um, calendar date filtering is working uh, anything that we have in terms of date should be either June or perfect so now we can see that um, we have June, that means um, the 6th, um, June uh, 8. Um, so we can see that our filtering um, is working, right? So anything, you, you know, random, we, se we randomly selected the first image and then we get um, this, um, you know, June. So it sounds like our filtering mechanism has worked, okay? So in this lecture, I'll, um, I'll talk about um, how you can apply um, some machine learning um, uh, classification, uh, specifically in this case, um, a clustering algorithm. Um, so first, uh, you need to import uh, an initializers engine. Uh, next, so for this exercise, I need to import a country's database. So all right, get a feature collection ok 
okay and then I'll uh, create a variable called countries okay then I would um, apply earth engine um, EE feature collection here I can choose from the list and provide the uh, countries database uh, feature ID US DOS you can get it from the earth engine library don't worry about this if you um, if you don't know um, already your ID or if you want to change a different polygon you can just um, go to earth engine uh, uh, check US DOS tag and you can find the same exact data that I'm entering here okay um, so this is um, you know countries uh, database for for all countries around the world um, so in this case I like to choose one country um, so that I'll have some specific analysis over over a small amount of area um, so uh, for this example I'll just choose Egypt okay so I'll call countries here and then select um, Egypt from this country's uh, world database and then select or rather use filter so this filter uh, function will help me to specify a country name and then select one country instead of um, mapping the entire um, world polygon so I'll use um, the field or the uh, property uh, that I want to use to select a country's database is country NA that means country name and then I'll specify the name of that specific uh, country that I'm interested to apply I think I'll just rather use Egypt okay so this will um, select a country's database uh, from the world you know shape file no issue here so the next step is to um, load the uh, Lanza data that I'm using so let's write a title first a pre computed Lanza composite for inputs to my my machine learning uh, classification uh, algorithm there's a typo here okay so I'll uh, create a variable called input and I'll cast EE image um, so that uh, I can import an, uh, an image from the earth engine library uh, so in this case it's a Landsat data and it's a Landsat uh, 7 data actually and it's a top of atmospheric reflectance and it's uh, one year and the year is 2001 okay that should be it and the next thing is to define a region of interest so that we can generate some sample um, for our training mind you we're gonna do a machine learning classification so we need uh, input data to train our model so that's what we're doing here so we're just generating a, you know a rectangle or some polygon to, uh, to, 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 to use it later to um, train uh, to generate training data for our model um, or classification um, so let me write a title here so define a region in which to generate a sample of the input data okay and I'll just call it region all right and then I'll use the earth engine built-in uh, function called geometry and rectangle actually instead of writing I can tap into that and then I'll provide um, the corners of this um, um, this pot this polygon that I'm creating uh, this is already known so you need to 
um, you know beforehand know what what the that location is um, you can easily get it from Googlers just to get the lot long information of those corners so this is my study area now and the next thing is to actually um, you know generate um, a training sample so now we have uh, an input satellite data uh, which is um, Landsat 7 TO8 top of atmospheric reflectance for 2001. And we also have a shape file or a polygon. Uh, using that, we can generate, um, um, we can generate um, a training data, okay? So make um, the training data set. Okay. So I'll write a function that does take the Landsat data, the input data, and just use this region uh, to generate um, some randomly generated sample points, okay? So I'll, I'll name that um, uh, training. You can name it differently, it doesn't matter. It's just a variable training uh, and then input. So this is the input Landsat data here and sample so the sample function will automatically generate um, um, data points points um, you can specify the number of points that you're interested in the spatial resolution uh, then you can generate those samples okay so I'll write region and the region is my um, rectangle here I've, I've created already a rectangle so I'll provide that And the spatial resolution, since I'm dealing with Landsat data, I'll specify it as 30. So, and the next thing, and probably the last thing in this training is the number of pixels I am interested to generate. Uh, in this case, I'll just um, generate 5,000 data points, okay? So this will generate the training data points for my analysis. And the next thing is to actually, um, you know, uh, initiate the uh, clustering. So in this case, I told you, we're just gonna uh, run a clustering algorithm. And so we're gonna apply our training data, which is here and just apply it to, to the model, okay? So in this case, what we're doing is we'll initiate the cluster and train it. So we'll, 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 we'll use the training data and then initiate the cluster, the model, the clustering model and uh, generate our, 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 our initial model using the training data. So I'll, I'll create the variable called cluster and then I'll cast EE. Um, so mind you, it's a nurse engine built-in model. So you see here cluster, right? Uh, and then I'll call uh, Weka, Weka K-means. It's already, uh, should exist already here, so yeah. Wake a camions here, and then I'll provide the number of um, um, clusters or the wake main uh, wake means that means the number of you know classes that I, I want uh, for this classification. I'll just provide 15, you can change it in your case. Um, and so train, so and I'll, I'll provide the, the training input data here. So train is my training data, training then this will generate or initiate the clustering algorithm and generate a model. And so the next thing is, so we have already a model, right? Um, and the next thing is to create, um, so to um, <clears throat> using this model to actually apply um, our model to this Landsat data, all right, to the image, okay? So that's the next step. So cluster the input using the trained cluster, okay? 
So what I need is result. I'll just um, create a variable called result. And uh, we'll need the Landsat image data here, input. And then I have my cluster model here. I'll just call that cluster. Our cluster here. And then, sorry, I have to just cast cluster. Input cluster. So cluster here. And then I'll just uh, input this uh, model here. I'll actually copy that and paste it here. So now I have two things here. This is my Landsat image and my already trained model, which is the cluster here, right? That's my model. And so what it does is just we already uh, gener we already applied um, created a model using this training data in this step, right? So the next step is we need um, to apply that model generated using these 5,000 data points and apply that model to our Landsat image so that we have um, classification um, map, okay? And that classification map, we can use it, um, uh, you know, for different uh, purposes, okay? And then the final, um, the final thing is to actually um, <clears throat> display our model, okay? <clears throat> so, um, so the next thing is to actually um, clip the model results, right? The classification or the model results, okay? Uh, and what we'll do here is we generate a clip file. I'll just call it clip. And then this is our final classification map, right? So it's result. Sorry, like the spelling here. Result. Okay. So the classification map is result. Okay. And then I'll clip that. Okay. I'll use Egypt here, the shape file that I've already created to clip uh, the clustering classification map, okay? And uh, let's save our script here. Let's start running um, the first cell here <clears throat> that will import the shape file. And this is our Landsat importing the Landsat and creating a, um, uh, a region of interest and also generating uh, a sample, training sample uh, data about 5,000 data points, okay? And we'll um, execute that. And this is our model. Uh, we initiated the clustering uh, classification model. Okay, excellent. So there's some typo there. So we um, applied our clustering algorithm to the, the image, the Landsat image. And we uh, already generated um, um, a map of the classification. We actually don't need um, this. And then finally, we just clip because this is a global data. So we just clip it to a study uh, area here. We execute that. And then finally, just to save time, I uh, uh, saved um, uh, a map display function using a Folium package here. Um, I usually uh, use this, this function to map it to save time. I uh, just, um, you know, already created it. So mind you, here we have this clip image. So that's our model, a classification model result. And we want to display it here, right? So we already inputted that and um, a random visualizer. Uh, we're using a random visualizer instead of um, providing the, the color part here. So it would just automatically generate some random numbers to the, the, the different classes, okay? And so because it's unsupervised classification, we're not that much interested to define the classification, okay? We're not like sure what is what, what we're interested here in this classification because it's unsupervised classification is just to identify, um, you know, the number of class that we have in that, in that landscape um, and then just understand that will help us um, um, in the process of running a supervised classification. So in the supervised classification, we want to 
know the number of classes and what kind of um, you know class or land cover uh, you have in, in that landscape. So this is just more like a diagnostic um, initial classification model before you run a supervised classification. So we execute this part which will help us to visualize our final classification uh, out of the clustering algorithm, okay? And let's um, zoom down, excellent. So this is our classification um, uh, based on the you know clustering algorithm. Um, so we generated a training data about 5,000 using this, this study area and um, generated a model, a clustering model and then applied that to our Landsat data, and here is the classification result. Okay, so um, you can you can see that we have this is um, uh, over Egypt. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, mostly urban area. So you have you can see that um, um, you know we have you know different classes, and so the advantage of running a cluster like a clustering algorithm or unsupervised classification is not necessarily um, making a pretty accurate classification but it will give you an insight um, before you do a supervised classification as to what kind of um, unique features you have in the landscape so um, you, 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 you would um, you can guess um, you know these features um, are similar like I mean, the features with similar colors are, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, can be categorized in a single land cover class or land use class. And so once you have that, I mean, you can even use this this data to to uh, create um, a training data for your supervised classification. Or you can just um, simply, you know, visualize that to get some insight and a prior um, you know, information before you do some supervised classification, okay? So in this lecture, I'll teach you how you can do some um, uh, machine learning classification using a satellite data. Uh, in this example, we'll, we'll be using a CART classification, which is one of uh, machine learning classification algorithm which is a, a classification and a reg regression tree approach. Uh, we'll be using an Erzingen built-in um, uh, method. Uh, so first, uh, let's get started. You need to import and initialize Erzingen if you've not done so. So the first thing is I'll um, import a Landsat imagery. So Landsat imagery is cloud free. Composite. Okay, so I will um, import Landsat 8 data from the Erzingen data library and using um, image collection, EE image collection. So I'll choose image collection to speed up and then also provide the um, image collection ID, which is uh, Landsat 8, uh, so LC08, and then collection 1. And then uh, tier one, perfect. So I already uh, imported my um, my um, Landsat A data uh, image collection, and in the next uh, in the next um, cell, since this is uh, cloud contaminated data, I'll use uh, the simple uh, Landsat composite uh, Erzingen built-in algorithm to. Uh, mask some cloud and then generate a composite image. Okay, so image or a function e e dots algorithms and Landsat simple composite. So I'll open a curly bracket. So my curly bracket here, I'll provide a couple of parameters. So the first one is a collection. Uh, what's my image collection? So this um, input, this um, uh, simple composite algorithm uh, needs um, 
uh, an image collection so it does uh, create an image using an image collection it's more like a compositing and cloud masking algorithm built um, by our team and I'll provide my Landsat um, L8 image collection this is the image collection I'll be using L8 so I'll filter it by date and then provide the specific date that I'm interested to uh, map 2018 and there one there are one and that's the start date and the end date is I'll open a um, quotation single quotation mark 2018 uh, 12 31 so I provided the uh, uh, end date and the start date the next thing is to create the other parameter which is also this parameter um, requires um, a floating um, a floating um, uh, property requirement so I'll assign uh, floating as true as float that's part of the algorithm so provide so floating true okay and that will be it and I'll just close actually the curly bracket here so I'll execute this to make sure that we are good to go. <clears throat> so the other thing is I'll use the, so, so we have different bands in this Landsat image. So I'll specify the bands, um, which band am I using? Is it band four, band five, band three or 11 uh, in my um, classification um, uh, algorithm. So I'll, st I'll specify the, the specific bands that I would, I would like um, to use in my classification algorithm. So use this band for classification or prediction. Okay, so I'll, I'll create a list of bands. So I'll name it bands. You can name it differently. It doesn't matter. It's a list. It's just a variable. And then I'll open um, a bracket since it's a list. So I'll provide the list of bands, band two. I'll actually um, copy this paste to speed up my typing. Band three, band four, band five, band six, and band 10. Last band is band 11. So mind you, this is Landsat 8 data. So, so now I specified <clears throat> this, this, the bands that I'll be using in my classification and I'll execute that okay next thing is to load uh, training data in this case I'll be using uh, an already created uh, training data uh, sometimes you can generate your own data but sometimes you can use um, uh, training data that's, that's already available so in that case uh, I'll be importing that data so load training points so the next thing is to um, and then also I need to define some information about what the numeric property is so the numeric property in the classification class stores noun labels okay so um, I'll import my points data this is just a variable and I'll call it point and then I'll uh, import my feature collection or training data from the earth engine um, data library just to speed things up and then I'll provide that ID it's called Google slash DE slash demo slash more launch cover labels I'll have to change this caps okay so now I'll execute that that will import this training data to um, my uh, script here 
the next thing is um, so um, I'll uh, create a, a properties label so that when we do the classification it will, it will smooth things up or streamline things all right so I'll imp I'll create a variable or just let me write what what this is first so this property of the table stores the launch cover class or labels okay so this property um, is I'll just I'll have a variable called label and assign it to want cover so in the data here this is the the class that stores the land cover classes here so that's what I'm doing here and the next step is to actually <clears throat> overlay these points with the uh, Landsat um, image let me actually overlay the training data here so overlay the points on the imagery to get training so we have the training data assigned here and then we have the satellite image so when we overlay that we'll get a, a training data for our classification the cart classification so this function training is equal to um, image so mind you this is the image that's already um, um, created here the Landsat 8 image okay so I'll call that image and I'll select the bands which bands do I need to capture um, using the training data so I'll need these are the bands mind you have already created a list of bands that I'll be using in the training um, um, in the classification so I'll call those bands that list I've already created okay and then sample regions so the sample region function let me open a curly bracket here and then I'll I'll need to provide the collection so the collection is points that means the feature collection that that's um, the the training data okay we're overlaying mind you here what we are doing is we are overlaying the the data points or the training points over the satellite image and then the other one is properties what properties am I using in this um, in this table and I've already defined that it's land cover and I named it label so I'll just um, create properties and and label so this is my label here and the next thing is um, scale what scale what special resolution do I need um, this um, sampling to occur I need a 30 meter because it's a Landsat data right and that will be it so that's that will actually achieve um, um, generating a, a training sample using the already provided feature and the Landsat image and generates training sample data excellent this will be used in the classification later okay the next step is the fun part is just to actually uh, run the cart classification algorithm so let me write a title for my um, classification train a cart cart is uh, classification and regression tree classifier was default parameters for now okay so to um, actually run the cart classification I need to provide a variable called trained and what I'll do is just call the earth engine built-in classifier and provide my specific model which is a smile cart that smile cart is the cart model built-in um, model in earth engine so smile cart 
Exactly, that's the cart model. And I'll provide the training data. And when I provide that training data, which I've already created here, it will run the cart classification algorithm using that training data, okay? So train, and then I'll provide my training data here. I'll copy that training data here into the train. So that will train the model. And um, I also need to provide a label. Which label and which bands is it using in this cart model? So again, the label is uh, label. I have already defined that. And also bands. These are the bands that, that will be used in the Landsat image. And these are the labels that will be used in the training data. And the training data is provided here. The next step is to execute that card classification model. This will generate a card classification model. And then we can use this later to generate a, cal a card classification um, map result using a Landsat image. Okay. So the next step, mostly the final step, is to actually apply this train model, this cart model, to an image, to our Landsat image, okay? So classify, classify the image, the image with the same bands used for training. So mind you, for training, we used the bands, right? So these are the, the list of bands that we, we used uh, for training. And we have to use the same bands for um, applying this card classification, okay? And so I'll create a variable called classified. And this classified is, you will apply the image. Mind you, this is the, the Landsat image that we already created earlier and we'll select the bands. So the bands is bands. We already created a band list right here. So we'll just apply that. And then the next step is to classify. Classify. And then we use this, this model. So this is our cart model. Trained is our cart model. Okay, so we're applying the cart model towards our Landsat image this will give us a final classified map okay we'll execute that again okay finally um we've done the the fun part the main part of the classification now i'll just take um you know copy the uh, map display function which i've already created and execute that this is used um uh, this uses a folium package just uh, so what we're doing is we're visualizing this classified image using the card classification algorithm. And let's see how it looks like. So some error here. So we have some data um, naming problem. Let's just fix that. Let's fix that. The Google image is, it doesn't seem to be right. So Google E, Demos, Demo. Okay, that's the problem. We have some typo here. We should be it. we should be fine now I'll save this typo uh, some type actually I'll execute everything from the start here in here and then we're exp exp importing the training data we have fixed the typo there and then we'll execute every cell one at a time and then hopefully we'll be able to see our card classification here it's running just uh, might take a few seconds and then hopefully we'll be able to see our card classification result it's taking time because it's uh it's uh we're just uh um you know mapping large um data so it might take time probably a few seconds Excellent. So that's our map result. So we have image and we have classification. Okay. Excellent. So this is our classification. We have, let's start actually from the image. So this is a global data. What we have done is classify the entire planetary data, Landsat data, using a cart model and 
um, a card classification algorithm and that's fantastic and you know thanks to Google Earth's cloud computing um, you know you, you can you can run a classification algorithm with this large you know volume of data at a planetary scale in a fraction of a second that's amazing the power of cloud computing so this is our original image the Landsat image that we used to run the card classification algorithm and this is our classification result okay so mind you this is a very simplistic model we used simply um, <clears throat> three classes for like urban forest and water just uh, kind of it for a demo purpose um, so uh, you know if you're doing a really serious research you need to generate your own training data and uh, then you will have a, a more accurate classification result but this is just interesting using a demo you know um, uh, data we're able to generate a planetary um, a global you know classification result classification map um, you know using this step and that will be the end of this lecture so in this lecture today uh, we'll uh, learn how uh, to run a cart supervised classification using the E3 um, ASLRI land cover data as our training data so we'll be extracting the training data from the ASLRI 2020 data and we'll be predicting um, land cover uh, for 2021 so we'll be converting this Landsat image a uh, Landsat 8 image into a land cover classification map using machine learning or supervised classification uh, on a Google Colab environment so Google Colab is more like a Jupyter notebook hosted on Google Cloud so you don't have to download or install any of the package including Earth Engine Earth Engine is already installed uh, on the uh, Google Colab environment so without a hassle worrying about you know memory um, or anything you can run any machine learning um, classification or big data analysis on C Google Colab so let's get started so the first thing is we'll be importing uh, the um, so to uh, open a new Colab um, you will go to your Google Drive and just uh, create a, a new collaboratory once you open that, you um, um, import the cell. The first one is to import EE. So in, EE is uh, Google Earth Engine. So we'll import the Earth Engine library um, and initialize uh, Earth Engine. And if it's your first time running uh, this code or uh, Earth Engine, you need to uh, uncheck this one, EE Authenticate. And then we'll have to uh, provide um, or authenticate your, your Earth Engine account via your your gmail account okay and i'll go ahead and execute this so this will uh, initialize and import earth engine so earth engine is um, uh, built in with the google Col um, the google collaboratory or google collab environment so you don't have to uh, you know download or install anything so you just uh, need to import it that's pretty um, nice and the next thing is you need to create ROI, region of interest. Um, you can actually change this ROI to any study area of your choice. For example, uh, in this case, I chose um, this just a lot long. You can get this from Google Earth or Google Earth Engine just by clicking and generating a lot long for any location. So this is technically a latitude and longitude um, location for any place on Earth. So for this example, I chose this, but you can change this if you want to, if, or if you're interested to do this exercise uh, on a different location, okay? And um, based on this, I'll create a, a location um, by generating a centroid and coordinate get info and inverting this, um, this lot log order. Uh, we'll be using this uh, when we create um, a map um, display later um, in, in this analysis, okay? Uh, so next thing is to actually import uh, Landsat 8 data. Um, so Landsat 8, if you go to the Google Earth Engine uh, platform and data sets, you have um, different uh, Landsat um, uh, data um, and based on the different instruments. 
um, Landsat 9, 8, 7, and the other Landsat legacy, um, you know, data sets. So in this case, we're using the Landsat, uh, you know, 8 data. Um, so uh, that's how we we um, we get the, the data. So you get the image collection ID um, from, uh, for, for example, this is LC08, LC1. So that means collection one, right? Um, and then tier one. So uh, collection one and tier one, this is it. So that's how you just, uh, you know, copy paste the, um, the, the image collection ID here. That's how you get it. And you also um, need to filter the, the Landsat image collection, it, which is a large volume of, you know, big Earth observation data, uh, which collects, um, you know, every every pixel um, of the of the planet so that's a, a large data and also it's a, a longer time series so you would need to filter it by space and time that means uh, a specific location that you're interested filter bound ROI here in this case our point location and in terms of time you need to apply filter date here which is in this case um, we're predicting the uh, 2021 land cover data uh, so we'll be using the Landsat 8 data for 2021 and we also need to sort the cloud cover metadata and then uh, pick first so we're, 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 we're sorting it and then uh, picking the first image which means um, the best uh, cloud free image from this collection okay and if I execute this, it will create the first image, uh, Landsat image for this specific location and also 2021 best cloud free image. And then we'll be using this image, Landsat image, to um, run our, our cart or supervised classification. Let's just go ahead and execute that. And the other thing is, so sometimes when you have a land cover classification you need to generate a training data manually by manually going and digitizing uh, um, labels for the training or the, the the classification right in this example we don't do that we'll rather use the history global 10 meter data which is for 2020 and we'll be extracting uh, already existing uh, land cover data for 2020 and um, using that so we'll be uh, extracting our label or training data uh, for the land cover classes uh, classes from the history 10 meter land cover data and by using that and also using the different band combination of the land set so this will be our uh, independent variables in the machine learning uh, classification and also the history uh, training data uh, which will be extracting um, you know down here will be a response variable okay and so the label that will have assigned to this uh, history data is uh, by default b1 so we'll be selecting that so what we're doing here is just is this is the history land cover data is a global data so we're mosaicing it and just clipping it by our uh, study area which is um, the um, you know the the, the landsat um, um, you know the the size of the landsat uh, scene okay and the next thing is to actually extract the, tra the training data from both the history land cover data, which has different land cover classes, and also the Landsat data, which has different, for each location, you have information on band one, band two, band three, band four, band five, and band seven. So we're selecting these bands from Landsat eight. Actually, Landsat eight has more bands, including the thermal bands, band 10 and 11. However, and this uh, exercise in the supervised classification will be using only the the this bands, okay? Uh, we don't use the the thermal bands. 
Um, so what we're doing here is just um, when we extract the training data, we have um, we have three inputs, right? So the first one is the image. So the image here is the Landsat image, okay? And the second one is LC. So LC is the E3 land cover data. So we'll be extracting the land cover and the Landsat bonds. And the third thing is the the um, our region of interest is the boundary of the Landsat image, and then image geometry will just um, will use it as a, row, a region of interest and automatically generate 1000 data points that's what this is doing num pixels all right and so it will generate 1000 data points within this landsat um, uh, area and then extract landsat bond value as well as land cover class values so our training data now will have 1000 data points each of those points have the land cover class from the E3 land cover data and also um, Landsat band uh, multispectral uh, information for the different bands okay and then we'll be using that in our classification um, sometimes you might need to uh, split the data for training and evaluation so that's what we're doing here we're just generating a random uh, column here and generating um, um, you know random um, numbers uh, and for example 1000 data points uh, so just generate random numbers and then we'll split the, the data into 20 percent 80 percent this is what we're doing here um, so the next thing is to actually run the model okay so this is um, this is um, a random force model um, so I'll just correct this um, random forest um, instead of cart okay and I'll also fix this random forest okay all right um, so so let's fix that um, and so we we'll run a random forest classification okay so this is our main model what are we doing here we are taking the training data so we're taking the training data here which has the land cover class the bands and the location for all of this 1000 data points and run an earth engine built-in um, EE classifier smile random forest which is a random forest earth engine built-in algorithm okay and it has it requires three parameters okay so the first parameter is actually the training data it's it's called feature so okay so training sample is um, so we'll take that 80% of the data which is train sample here right okay and then the other thing is class property so class property is the label mind you so this is where the land cover classes are so we'll provide that so uh, what are we, so we're telling the random force model that you know train our model based on this classes this land cover classes and then we need later we need an output a prediction um, that looks like this land cover class classes all right so that's called class property and the final one are our independent variables that we are using to make the prediction which is called input properties um, excuse me uh, so input properties right and these are bonds what are this these are the Landsat bonds so we're using the Landsat bonds this bands band one two three four five and seven to make a prediction and this will technically will train our model so this is our random force classification model if we execute this it will run the classification and the last thing is once you establish your model you would need to use that uh, train classifier and apply it to the image to the Landsat image so that 
will have a wall-to-wall -wall land cover classification image, all right? So this is where you would, um, by applying uh, classify and then inputting the model, the random forest model here, and then providing that Landsat image will generate a land use land cover classification map. So this is our final map. And the attribute for this is classification, okay? Let's go ahead and execute this um, supervised classification. So um, if we have, um, mind you, so this is um, running on Google's, you know, um, um, cloud so you don't have to um, you know consume any any of your machines memory and whatnot so it's it's uh, run on the cloud that's pretty fast right um, and so the next thing is to visualize our our data our, our model classification okay so here we'll import a folium package which is um, a nice tool um, on earth engine to do some uh, interactive mapping, something like the Googlers in JavaScript API, right? So, so Folium is a pretty fancy tool. So we'll import this. It's already um, installed. Uh, it's part of the collab, so we don't need to install. Just import it, and also write this function. What this function does is just tells Folium um, to um, um, to integrate or to understand um, the Earth Engine mapping, um, um, you know, uh, mapping um, function. So we're writing here, just you can name this differently if you want, like add layer. Uh, so it requires a few parameters, right? Um, so, so we're just technically uh, the standard, you know, Python Folium mapping we're just doing it the way the JavaScript API Earth Engine map function does, right? It you know it inputs uh, our image object and visualization parameter and just the name of the you know that um, that that layer, okay? And then you just uh, create a location map and then a zoom map here, foliar map, and. You know, to make it a little fancier, we can also add some Google Satellite Hybrid Map here, and this using this function, so that it, it looks more like the JavaScript version of um, the map, the map canvas. Okay, let's execute this, importing and writing this following function. And lastly, um, you know, last thing, uh, let's create a you know dictionary for the different land cover. Uh, and also the different colors um, for this respective land cover classes, for example, water tree and, and whatnot. So we'll be using that in our in our map here. And so we'll be uh, you know having here the model, which is the random force classification model. That's our final model, right? And which has the minimum value one and ten, right? And then we just have our dictionary colors um, for a palette, right? And we also just map the Landsat data just to compare. Like we map at layer here and we input the image. And also we have the visualization parameter for the Landsat um, band combination. And just display our map. And then we can execute this again. I've already run it previously, but just uh, you know to be safe. We can also just change this Google um, hybrid you know, background to uh, you know open straight map if you want to. So this is our Landsat image, okay? And we have technically, uh, by running this supervised classification using random forest on Earth Engine and also is land cover training data without manually generating any training data, we've converted this Landsat image into a land use land cover classification, something like this. So this is just a sample for for a test study region, and you can change the study area as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so this is a, a demonstration on how you can run a machine learning uh, classification uh, using Landsat and without generating training data and extracting it from the history land cover 2020 data. And this is uh, actually um, a prediction for 2021. 
okay? So that's how you would implement a supervised classification using Earth Engine Python API and Google Colab. So in this lecture, I'll show you how you can apply SVM classifier or support vector machine uh, using the Earth Engine uh, Python API and Google Colab. Let's get started. So first thing is you need to import and authenticate um, and initialize Earth Engine. So let's get started. So the first thing is I'll um, import my Landsat image. So input imagery is cloud free Landsat 8 composite and I'll name it L8. image collection and then I'll uh, provide the ID the image collection ID and collection one and tier one okay the next thing is to uh, create a Landsat um, Composite using a Landsat um, simple composite Earth Engine built in algorithm. So, right image is equal to um, I'll uh, access the Earth Engine algorithm, algorithms, and then Landsat simple composite. Okay, this is the algorithm that I'm using and I'll open a curly bracket and then I need um, information collection. So that's the, the collection information, the image collection, which is Landsat 8, right? I already created that image or imported that image collection and I'll filter it by date. Filter it dead. And 2018. 0101 zero, one, zero, one. that means the starting date for the image is January 2018 and the end is 2018 uh, December okay my next parameter is I'll have to change it the data type to float and true okay so that's the the algorithm to apply cloud composite to this image collection next thing is um, I'll need to uh, specify the bands that I'll be using in my uh, SVM classifier so use this bands for prediction okay so I'll specify the bands. In this case, I'll create a list of bands. Um, I'll need actually a single quotation, B1. Uh, next one is B2 band 2. I'll edit it later to save time. Okay, let me just uh, edit band 3, band 4. One, five, six, and seven. The other bands are band 10 and 11. Okay, so these are the bands that I'll be using in my classifier. And the next thing is to create a polygon manually uh, and then use that polygon to generate a training data. Okay, so I'll create manually create polygons so this is one approach to create a, a training data okay so I'll have two classes the forest class and non forest class okay so I already know this um, GPS locations for this um, and then so if you want um, a different training map you know the data point you can you can change this GPS locations okay so I'll create a variable called forest one 
Okay, so this is a, a geometry, a point, um, a rectangle rather. I already know the, the location for this, so that's how. So geometry, rectangle, and then I'll provide the GPS uh, locations for this ones. Um, 63.0187. That's one corner, and the other one is 93958. Uh, the next one is minus six. See that these are the four corners of the GP, the, um, the location for that recta rectangle. And then nine three, the last coordinate is nine three four four three. So this is my first. Um, data point rectangle that I'll be using to um, generate a training data. And the other one is the second one is instead of this, let me update the location for this. Minus 62, uh, 8145. And the second point, the second coordinate position is minus 9.206. And the third is 62. 7688. Okay, and the last coordinate for this one is 1735. So I've created two polygons for forest, the forest one and forest two. And the next one is a non forest class, a non forest polygon actually. So this is non forest one. Okay, and this one is non forest two. Okay. And then I'll update the coordinate positions for this. So this is um, minus, mind you again, this is already uh, the location that I know. So for, for your purpose, you can change the coordinates uh, of your interest if you want to. So minus 628161. And the other one is minus 9. Five zero zero one, and the third coordinate information for this point is six two point seven nine two one, and the last coordinate point is actually minus nine point four four eight six, and the last one is we already uh, created a name. The only thing we need is just to create the coordinate information. So the last one is minus 62.6788. And the next coordinate information is minus 9.044. And the next is minus 62.6459. And the last coordinate information is minus 8.99866. Fantastic. So we have two forest class and then we have two non forest classes. Okay. <clears throat> Excellent. So now we have manually created our um, polygon that we will be using to create a training data. Okay. So the next thing is to make a feature collection from the handmade geometries. Make a feature collection from the handmade, the handmade polygons, right? Or geometries or rectangles, whatever you, you want to say. So, so these are like different separate, you know, features. This is one feature. This is another feature. So a feature collection is um, a collection of features or a collection of shape files. So when we create a feature collection, you will um, merge them or aggregate them into a single collection so that we can access all of this in, into a single data data set. That's what we are doing here. So polygons, this is just a variable. You can um, name it differently. So Earth engine feature collection. So I'll cast that and then an open bracket. Okay, so I'll um, simply call um, oh, not this argument, All right? Open bracket. 
What? No, that's not what I want. Let me just delete this. Okay. And then EE. Okay. Should be fine. So feature. So this is a feature. And then I'll um, call all of these features one at a time, right? So none first one. So that's my none first one class. And then so class is so this is taken from the data itself. So zero. So I'll define that class as zero because it's a uh, it's uh, a non forest, right? So non forest is zero and forest is one, literally. That's what I'm saying here. So I'll just copy paste to save time here. So I'll do the second uh, non forest two class, and again it's the same zero, right? And the third one is a forest class actually, and it should be one. So instead of non forest, I'll change it to forest, and this is one. And again, I have another the last one, the forest class, okay? And this is one again, and this is forest two, okay? And then, and close my bracket here. Perfect. So this will create a feature collection. So actually let's execute everything and make sure that it's, uh, it's working. So now we have a feature collection. All of these data points are aggregated into one feature collection, okay? So then let's go to the fun part and let's create um, <clears throat> a training data using this, um, this uh, feature collection or a polygon and also the Landsat data, all right? So uh, let's create, um, so get the values for all the pixels in each polygon in each polygon in the train okay now I'll create a variable called training all right and then call the Landsat image which we have already created earlier here so this is the image that we have already created an image composite we'll call that here <coughs> and then Sample region, which is an algorithm. Um, sample regions is a built in Earth engine algorithm. <clears throat> and open a bracket and asterisk and a curly bracket. Okay. And then I'll input the different parameters for this um, algorithm to work. So the first thing is um, to provide the collection information. So the collection information for this is. Um, I have a collection already. What is my collection? This is the feature collection, the polygons, okay? So write polygons, okay? And then the, actually let me write a note so that it will be clear. So get the samples, the sample from the polygons. Polygons features feature collection. Sorry. Okay. All right. So okay, feature. Okay. So the next step is to provide the uh, properties, and so keep this list. Keep this list of properties from the polygons. So the polygon has different um, attributes or fields. Which which field am I am I gonna use? So that I'm 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 gonna specify uh, that here in this uh, in this line. So I'll write properties. So I'm defining the the property or the, the 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 field in that database that I'm interested to use in this classification or training data generation. Property properties and that's the property class that I'm using, all right? So I have already defined these properties. So I'm telling uh, Python that I'm interested to use 
this class in the training, uh, in generating the training class. Okay. All right. The next thing is to define the scale. As always, um, I, I'm using a Landsat data. Um, so let me just write set the scale to get Landsat pixels in the polygons. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'll uh, define the scale. All right. So the scale is 30 meter, obviously, from because we are using a Landsat data. Okay. So now we have, oops. Um, so now we have general. We have uh, created an algorithm to cal to um, generate training data using the Landsat image and the polygons that we have, created, we have created. Excellent. So now the next step is the fun part is to generate, um, to um, train our model, to create our model using th this training data, okay? So the fun part is now creating the SVM or support vector machine uh, classifier with uh, using the training data, okay? So create an SVM, an SVM classifier with custom parameters okay so i'll call a i'll create a variable called classifier okay this is a variable which will store the model so ee classifier which is an earth engine built-in um, function and support vector machine is lib svm okay so this is my support vector machine model and I'll just uh, create a curly uh, bracket to uh, define my model parameters. So the first parameter is kernel type. I need to define the kernel type for my SVM. So I'll type kernel, kernel type, okay? And then I'll define the kernel type as R bf right and the next parameter is gamma these are the 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 the, the default um you know parameters uh that you are required to set to run a svm or support vector machine 0 0.5 and the last parameter is cost i'll just put 10 and now this is my um, support vector machine. So that's the, <clears throat> I haven't trained it yet, but I'm just developing the model, okay, the classifier. And then I'll execute that, no issue here. And the next important step is I have this model, the classifier, and apply the training data, which I've already created to this model, okay? So I'll train the classifier, train classifier, okay? So to train the classifier, I'll create a variable called trained, okay? And then I'll call this classifier, okay? I'll copy that and then paste it here. That's my classifier. And then train. So to train, I need a training data. So this is my training data. I'll copy that here and then paste it here into train. And when I do that, I need to define two things. I need the class that I'm using to train and also the bonds from the image. So the, the, the class from the training database is class. I've already defined that earlier here, you remember? And then the, the, the bonds that I'll be using from the Landsat image, satellite image is bonds. These are the lists that I've already created, you remember here? Okay, so all of these bonds. So I'll just... Uh, give it the bands and the classes. Now I have, um, this will train the model. Excellent. The last and the fun step is to actually classify the image. So I've already trained my classifier. The last thing is to apply this model to my Landsat image, and then I'll get a final classification result. Okay. All right, let's um, create a title here, classify the image this is the final part so I'll create a variable called classified and 
then what I'm doing is I'll call the image because I'm, I'm going to classify the image and my final classifier like the 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 model the trained model classifier so it was just trained right so first i'll um have the image and then classify classify and i need my model the trained model here right trained okay this will give me um classification result let's see okay so finally, to save time, I have already created a map canvas here using Folium package. Let's execute that. And then in a second, we'll be looking at the fun part, our SVM classified um, classified model results using um, Landsat 8 data. It's running. It's uh, taking a little bit time here. Okay, fantastic. So this is our uh, classification model here. So we're using a forest uh, versus non-forest class. And as you can see here, um, we have um, the green of forested area and the, the red deforested area. So because we just created our sample like randomly from, you know, an unknown place that that's the reason that this is not like a pretty uh, realistic classification but if you were to take uh, mind you that um, we have created the the um, you know the polygons this this points just randomly so if you created this point from a really known area uh, like a forest or a non forest you would get a pretty much realistic um, looking uh, classification. But this is just kind of a demo to show you how you can generate um, uh, a classification using um, SVM or supervised uh, support vector, vector machine SVM uh, classifier in, in Ars Engine using uh, you know, Python and Colab. In this lecture, I will uh, Use the Hansen data to map a global forest cover. Um, first, um, we'll open a Google uh, Colab uh, to open a Python script. So Google Colab is um, a Jupyter notebook on the cloud, uh, technically. Uh, so our engine is already installed on, on the uh, Colab environment. So you need to import uh, the Erzengine EE um, uh, package uh, or library however you call it, and you need to authenticate using this uh, script, EE Authenticate, and also initialize. Um, and once you write this uh, part of the script and you just uh, execute in, um, a, a Google link will come. And then once you click that, it, it will just um, direct you to your Google account to authenticate that. Uh, you'll be getting a, a code, um, and you just uh, copy that and paste it here. I've already authenticated, but in your case, you need to authenticate, uh, copy paste that code. Uh, once you authenticate it, then you can start, uh, you know, um, loading your data. So um, that's how you get started with, um, you know, importing, authenticating, and initializing Erzengine on uh, the uh, Google Colab Python um, API. So once you you uh, authenticate uh, and initialize Erzengine. Um, you need to load a couple of data. The first one is the uh, global countries data. As you can see here, I'll declare variable countries uh, and then also use EE feature collection uh, on the Earth Engine um, API. And I'll provide uh, image collection, uh, sorry, uh, feature collection ID. That's a feature uh, that's already existing on the Earth Engine uh, data library. Um, so I'll copy that uh, from the Earth Engine data library and paste it here. And so that will import um, countries administrative boundary data. And um, the next step is to actually um, import the Hansen Global Forest data and uh, UMD uh, Hansen Global. And I'll declare variable tree cover 2014. Uh, EE image uh, will be used to import this data and that will import uh, the data. So I'll go ahead and then execute that.
Okay, next step is to actually uh, visualize the data. Uh, I'll be using the folium package here, uh, import the folium, and then write this function. Now this, this part of the function will create a displaying map canvas below using the folium uh, package. Um, and, and in addition, I'll also add some, you know, zoom level. Um, I'll just actually use uh, probably six or four. Uh, and um, so I'll add uh, a few parameters here. Uh, this, this will uh, create um, an outline for country's uh, boundary data. Uh, we'll uh, create a red color uh, to mark the outline of the country's data, data, uh, database. And the next is actually to uh, map the tree cover data, which we have already imported here uh, using the Hansen uh, global data. And I'll, I'll call that and then clip it here. And we'll specify the bands that I'll be using here, in this case, uh, tree cover. Go ahead and execute. And so as you can see here, um, you have the global forest cover, uh, tree cover rather. So um, the so it's, uh, it's ranging from zero values to 100. Uh, as you can see, uh, the uh, deep green values in, in the Congo Basin. And also, if you look at the Amazon Basin over here, uh, the deep green shows, um, you know, higher percentage of tree cover, closer to 100. And areas with black color have um, uh, tree cover um, um, closer to zero or you know, areas that do, that do not have um, you know, tree cover or forest cover, however you call it. So this is a, a more general a representation of a tree cover map, a global tree cover map, um, you know, uh, which is a continuous data uh, ranging from zero to one to highlight um, you know, areas, parts of the world where we have forest cover uh, and tree cover. And you can subset this data to your study region if you want to, but this is, uh, you know, how you um, basically map uh, a, a global tree cover data using the Hansen uh, uh, tree cover data uh, using the Erzingen Python API and Colab. Uh, in this lecture, I'll show you how you can map uh, forest gain and loss. Uh, in this case, we'll be using uh, an example or a case study in uh, Gabon. So let's get started. Uh, we need to import uh, authenticate and initializers engine. I've already done so. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so the first thing is uh, to load uh, country data, uh, load country data, and um, so I'll just import countries uh, shape file. Uh, I'll import it as earth engine feature collection. So I'll have a Earth Engine feature collection and then I'll provide the ID uh, US dos and 2017. Okay. And then this will import the uh, data and then I'll also um, provide a, a filter uh, to subset the country's boundary to a single country. In this case, I'll be using uh, Gabon as an example. So I'll apply filter, filter, and I'll use a uh, EE or Earth Engine filter again, and apply equal, and then provide the uh, two parameters here. The first one is the field that I'll be using and the, the Second one is the field ID that I'll be using. So I'll provide country NA and Gabon. So tree cover. So EE image, I'll import uh, the Hansen data, UMD slash Hansen global forest change 
Okay, so in this case, we imported the hands and data. And now what we uh, need to do is just to uh, select uh, loss, uh, the loss layer and also the gain layer. It's embedded in this data. So let's uh, import first the loss layer. So I'll copy this uh, image, the tree cover data and and select uh, the loss uh, layer. Okay, and then I'll also need to uh, select the gain layer, same tree cover, 2014. This one is select, okay. Select, again, uh, instead of loss, I'll do gain. Uh, I need to put it uh, in a square bracket. So now I have uh, imported a shape file uh, to subset my study area and also imported the global tree cover data. And um, from that, I selected the loss data uh, and the gain data. So what it means is that for certain year compared to the 2000 baseline year, um, is, is there a, a forest loss or a forest gain? So we'll just be mapping that. Um, and so, we can execute this part of the code and there's some error here. Let's see what's going on. Oh, we have uh, missed uh, a bracket, a, cr a bracket here, and then it should be fine. Now I can execute the code. And next step is actually to map the data using a folium package. We imported a folium. So this function, uh, add layer function will import an earth engine map canvas and uh, display the data. Um, so I'll be just uh, mapping the gain uh, and so um, I'll be mapping the gain and the loss. Um, so first uh, let's map the first gain and then execute that. So let's just zoom in into Gabon. Okay, so we have mapped the first gain. Uh, and let's just do the forest loss. And instead of um, gain here, I'll just say loss. That's what uh, we are just, um, you know, using the loss and the gain data, okay? And um, so here I clip it by, you know, gap on the steady area and then mask um, the loss data again. And uh, I'll just provide a, a red color since it's a loss, a forest loss, and I'll rename this as uh, forest loss. And I'll save that. Um, and then just uh, delete these cells, I don't need them. And then save my script here. And then execute that. Hopefully successfully um, executing. So I can zoom into Gabon here. I can actually change the zooming level, um, probably, you know, six. I'll save that so that I uh, have a better, better zooming, adjusting the visualization. Um, okay, that's not gonna work. So let me adjust the zoom level here. Um, five here. Okay, so I'll execute that again. Still not just getting there, so let's uh, let's just keep it as four. That way we can scroll down to get the actual, you know, steady area here in Gabon. We can differentiate that. It's just um, so interesting. Um, so we have here the red is the first loss and the blue is the first gain so pixels that have gained forest uh, or more you know uh, more reforestation and this would be uh, in a clear cutting or deforestation or any uh, forest disturbance so you can see that um you know we we have now mapped uh, a forest loss in a red color and uh, a forest gain in and um in a in a blue color um, so that's how uh, 
you know you can um, map uh, forced gain and loss for a specific country in this case Gabon using uh, the Earth Engine Python API um, and uh, Collab. In this lecture uh, I'll show you how you can map a Modis burn area. Uh, first um, uh, in this Collab uh, env Python environment uh, we'll import uh, uh, the Earth Engine uh, library, authenticate and initialize. Um, uh, and once you do that, I've already done, uh, you just uh, get to the main part of the, the code. Um, so here, um, so the Modis burn area uh, is a product uh, uh, from the Terra and Aqua uh, satellites, the Modis satellites. There are two satellites in the Modis, the Terra and Aqua satellites. Um, so the products MCD six four A one. So it's a monthly data and it's five hundred meter um, uh, spatial resolution. Uh, so we'll be importing uh, that image collection here. Uh, so it's Modis collection six, and that's the product. Um, and it's a global data, uh, and also it's a long time series. So we'll have to filter the data by by date. In this case, we'll have a start date. A start date of Ju June um, uh, January first, and uh, an end date of uh, December thirty first, uh, twenty seventy, and uh, we'll calculate a median uh, to aggregate the data. And so, what it means is that it will calculate the the median value for each pixel in the time series or in the image collection, and um, generate the median pixel value for each uh, burnt burn it, uh, burn it area. And so, and also this data set has multiple layers. Um, so we need to select the specific, um, you know, parameter that we're interested in. in. This case, we'll be selecting the burn date, the burn date. Okay. So we'll uh, declare a variable burn area, and data set is select burn date. And next, we when uh, we need to uh, create some visualization parameter. Uh, I'll call it burn um, burned area vis and define the minimum value and the maximum value. Um, uh, you get this data from the, 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 the raw data itself, the, the minimum and maximum value. And also just create um, a color palette. Um, you can use color brewer or HTML color code to generate this um, color codes for visualization. So I'll go ahead and execute this. And the next step is to uh, using a, a, a folium package, uh, importing a folium, and also this uh, bit of a function will help us to uh, visualize or create a map canvas below to visualize uh, the data, the burn, the modis burn data. And uh, here, the most important part of the, the script here is that we will just add the burn area, which you already uh, defined here. And also the next thing is to um, uh, import actually the visualization parameter, uh, burnt area vis, which we already uh, created here, the visualization parameter. Uh, and lastly, to display, before we display the data, uh, we uh, actually um, give it a name, a layer name. So burnt area 2017, and then finally execute this code. And now we would be able to visualize burn um, Modis burn area product, which is a global data. Uh, as you can see, if you zoom into some parts of Africa, so the red is you know high burn um, area, and the yellow is low low burn area. So you can see that um, for any place on on the planet, you can you can um, kind of access the uh, burn area um, value. For any place that has some, um, you know, fire disturbance, and this is a pretty useful data, uh, and it's a monthly data, so um, you can, I mean, depending on your application, uh, you know, especially for first application, you can monitor for, you know, to quantify and monitor a forest disturbance in in any given place and time. Um, so that's how you would, uh, you know import uh, and visualize, uh, you know, uh, Modis burn area product, which is a 500 meter spatial resolution and a monthly temporal resolution um, using the Earth Engine Python API and Google Colab.